So let's put uh, an object again on an inclined plane, as we saw before. And the inclined plane, let's say, has angle theta. And the object, here it is, with mass m on the inclined plane. The, because we can imagine that there's no friction on the surface, of course, the, the object will accelerate downwards. And it, uh, it, won't, uh, it won't accelerate or even move in this tilted vertical direction, if you will. So the easiest way to describe the motion of this object is to think of a system where, as we mentioned before, should look like that, where we sort of have a tilted x direction and a tilted y direction, and the motion can only be in this tilted x direction. It would make life a lot harder if we had a system that is like that, because we would have, if this object slides down the inclined plane, then it, it would have a motion along both of these directions. So by choosing a tilted reference frame, we make life easier for us. So let's, uh, maybe we can do a free body diagram and let's pull the object out of its environment. There it is with mass M and uh, in the tilted vertical direction, we know that there's a normal force, right? The object isn't falling through the surface, the inclined plane, and so there must be a force there that's normal to the surface due to the surface itself. And, and of course, there's gravity acting straight down, but we don't care about gravity. Our, our, our system is tilted, so we need everything within this tilted system because our two dimensions don't speak to each other, so we need the forces along this direction that'll give us one component of ma equals f, and that component is independent of the uh, component along here, right? Because dimensions don't speak to each other. So we really want the part of gravity that's this way, and as we saw before, given that angle, we could look at the triangle here. Gravity is straight down, but we need the part over here, and the angle in here would be theta as well. And so this would be m g cosine of theta. Um, there's no friction force. As soon as we introduce friction on a surface, we'll see that'll be opposite to the direction of motion. The object will <coughs> slide down, <coughs> excuse me, the inclined plane, because there's a part of gravity along here. And if this is m g cosine theta, this has to be m g sine of theta, and we can look at it geometrically from the triangle, right? Um, so that's a free body diagram, and so we can now break up ma equals f <coughs> into its component, right, a tilted y direction, tilted y direction. Uh, so what does that say? Well, the left-hand side, uh, the ay, if you will, there's no acceleration that way, so we have zero. And the forces, we can read them off the free body diagram. It's, it's one's positive. Let's bring Fn in with a positive sign. And let's bring Mg, or rather Mg cosine theta, with a minus sign. So that all these quantities are positive, but one comes in with a minus sign there. And that's the y direction component of Ma equals F. For the tilted horizontal direction, or the tilted x direction, uh, all we have is one force, and so the left-hand side, well, the right-hand side is M. Oh, our convention is to the left is negative, so we might as well put a minus sign there. Minus Mg sine of theta, doesn't really matter, but um, then we can say the left-hand side is the Max, so Ma, where the A means the tilted horizontal acceleration. So there's a so this equation, when we solve it, will tell us that the acceleration is minus g sine theta, and by convention, the tilted, uh, tilted uh, left or, or, or left and downwards direction uh, is negative, and that's the direction in which the object will move. Um, so that's what this second equation, what this equation gives us, and this one, of course, gives us the normal force, which doesn't seem to be uh, necessary to figure out 
the way the object moves. And we'll see that that's not the case when we introduce friction.